There we go. So uh, this is going to be a quick overview of um, ERM, specifically the usage statistics module, um, which has been added in, in the 23.11 release. ERM, I think, has been around since 22.11, but for some of you, it might still be quite new. You might not be using it yet. So I'm just going to do a very quick whistle-stop tour of the, the rest of the ERM module as well. Uh, if you would like more information on that, then I'd point you in the direction of our YouTube channel, um, PTFS Europe on YouTube. We've got various videos on there around different parts of the ERM module, what it's available for um, and how it can be used. But I'll just do a very quick show and tell of the different areas and then move on to use of statistics, which is the new and exciting thing for, for this release. So ERM itself is enabled via a system preference. So uh, there's a section in the main window here in the admin page, and you just need to enable the module, and then it will appear in the home screen. Uh, when you come into the module itself, you've got various uh, options down the side, this new one being what we've added in 2311. Um, but you've got your agreements, licenses, and e-holdings. They've been around since 2211, and the current release also includes quite a lot of bug fixes and smaller improvements um, for those as well. So there's still various changes that you might see or notice um, in those existing modules. Agreements sort of does what it says on the tin. Um, you've got your um, a list of your agreements with various different pieces of information. You can link your packages to these. You can add users. You can also add documents as well. So if you've got hard copy documents that you want to scan in um, and attach to these documents, uh, to these agreements, you can do so. Licenses, very similar. Um, you can keep your documents. You can see some examples here and assign users to these. Um, and obviously they're all linked to the vendors as well. Um, one of the things that's being developed at the moment, not obviously currently released in 2311, but hopefully for the next set of releases is the ability to add additional fields to licenses, which can then be extended out across the other elements as well. So that's something that Pedro has been working on in collaboration with one of the customers. You've then got e-holdings split between local, and we also support a link with EBSCO. So you've got your local packages and your local titles. Um, and also in development at the moment is the option to import titles from a KBAR file. Um, so not available in the current release, but it's in testing at the moment and would be available next time around. So that would be obviously much more easy to import and migrate your data into ERM. Then within, within EBSCO, you can obviously link directly into the holdings IQ um, and interact with your packages. So you can see which ones are part of your holdings um, and you can interact and remove these or add them to your holdings from within COA and obviously link to all your titles as well. So now if I switch into e-usage, I'm just going to come into a different window for that one um, because I've got some data loaded in. So the usage statistics module is one that we've actually developed ourselves here at PTFS. So that was myself and Pedro that developed that, um, and that's been released as part of 2311. You are able to link directly to the um, Sushi reports um, that, or the counter reports that are released via the Sushi API from different providers. So each provider that you set up, you can run harvests either manually or via cron job. So you can just set it to run in the background every month or every few weeks, whatever you wanted to do. And it will go out and harvest all the data that you'd normally retrieve in counter report form from different providers. So you set your provider in. So if we come into Wiley here, um, obviously the credentials I've redacted that we've been using, but I did run this one earlier. Um, so we've got data as part of this provider. It will give you a list of your titles that you've got as part of that platform or as part of the data that you've harvested. You can also see platform data. You can see item data. There's none for this particular provider, but you can also see the database data as well relating to different providers. And if you do have a provider that doesn't support the Sushi API, you can manually upload counter files as well, and it will harvest that data in the same way that it currently does um, via the API. And then every import that you do, whether it's from a cron job or a manual import, is then available for download as well. So you've got access to the raw data within each provider. Uh, as I mentioned, you can run these manually. So if you wanted to run the provider for a given um, time period, I'll just set this running in the background and we can go back and have a look um, if I just do the last two or three months of data. 
that will start running. It will queue a job for every report type that you have selected on a provider. Um, I'll show that provider creation form in a second. Uh, and what it will do is it will go away and it will start, uh, well, that one's failed, <laughs> but it will go away and it will run the provider's uh, harvest data. So that one I'm assuming has failed because we don't have data for the March time period yet because we've not finished uh, all of March, so that data won't be ready. But the harvest goes through and adds title data. Um, and the way it's set up to run is that if it detects a previously harvested data for that time period for that title or that item or database, it won't repeat the harvest. It will make sure that it's not duplicating data within a time period. Adding a provider is linked directly to the counter registry. So if we wanted, for example, to look for ProQuest um, as a provider, it's linked directly into there. Um, and it will automatically populate the URL so that it's handled directly for you. And it will also give you information about what credentials are required to connect to that particular provider so that you can look for those in your ProQuest account. Uh, it also will only allow you to select from a list of reports that are supported by that provider. Once you've harvested your data, we also offer a reporting um, matrix so or a, a reports builder. So you're able to come in and be quite flexible with what data you want to search for from a provider. Um, so you can choose from your list of report types, or if you select a provider, it will limit that list to the ones that it supports. And similarly for the metric types, it will only show you the metric types that are applicable to that report. So it's quite easy and intuitive to use. You don't have to keep referring back to documentation every time you want to run a report. Uh, so if we just run a report for that time period we've just harvested, um, that will go away and it will give us all the data. We've got January and February data for this year. If we want to filter for 2023, we can do so and we now get all of that data. Um, and that's available, obviously. Um, it's paginated to 20 results at a time to start with, but if you wanted to export that data, you could harvest all of the data or fetch all of the data, and then you can export in various formats if you wanted to work on that offline um, and run your own analysis on it. You're also able to save the reports. So as you fill in your report here, you can just enter a report name and save that at the bottom. And then when you come back in, you've got access to those reports every time. So that's just the same report that I ran just now, um, but we've now got that set up for, um, it, it's kept in the database and you're able to access that every time you come into the reports builder. And I think that's just about everything. Uh, you've got a, a quick summary page, which tells you what data you've got. So for every provider, it will tell you for each report type, what time period of data you've harvested. Um, so if you wanted to work out whether you had data for a particular time period for that provider, you're able to see that very quickly on the summary page as well. And I think that covers that part of the demo. Uh,